Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today, we're gonna talk about efficiency in the cold. That's right, it's getting colder. A lot of people who just bought EVs are wondering, why doesn't my vehicle go as far as it did when it was warmer? Well, I'm gonna tell you all about why and some things you can do to combat it. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, so it's getting colder and people who just bought EVs are noticing, wait a minute, why doesn't my car get as much range as it used to? Well, uh, the simple answer is it's your battery. Um, batteries are way different than internal combustion engines and they don't um, always perform the same way all the time. And so basically what happens when it's cold outside, uh, there's more resistance with the battery. So it is, um, more reluctant to a let energy out and b let energy in and that's really important because with evs what makes them so efficient is a um you can drive you can use the electricity and the motors are efficient and it's really nice and you don't use a ton of energy and b we have regenerative braking and that puts energy back into the battery thusly increasing the efficiency well what happens is when it's cold outside you can't really put as much energy back into the vehicle. Therefore, your efficiency is going to decrease. And um, in my observations over my time uh, having um, an EV, well, several EVs now, I've noticed that it decreases by about 20% as compared to the EPA, typically is what I notice. Um, and usually when it's you know really warm outside, I've noticed I get above the EPA. So about 20% below the EPA um, is what I've noticed, especially in the ID4 and the Kona Electric. Now, um, uh, data from fueleconomy.com, and it, there's a graphic, I'll attach it so y'all can look at it. But basically what's really interesting is, it says you recapture about 20 to 22% of energy via regenerative braking. So doesn't that make complete sense? When your battery's cold, it can't put energy back in or as much energy back in, and then you're not gonna have as good of efficiency. So during the winter months, I wouldn't freak out too much, um, especially if you're just using it for daily driving, you're gonna be okay, obviously it doesn't matter. When you wanna go on road trips, that's where things start to get a little bit different. So obviously if it's cold, um, the efficiency is going to decrease. However, when you're on a road trip, you're keeping the battery warmer. So the efficiency isn't going to be as bad as when your battery is ice cold. Uh, you know, you leave it parked outside, you wake up and you drive and you're like, oh, what's going on with my efficiency? So what I thought would be fun and kind of what brought about this video is in my Tesla, I'm in the ID4 right now. In my Tesla, it actually shows the energy consumption and it actually shows the, the regen and then the power use. And when the regen is limited, it has this kind of yellow dash. And it's like, nope, you can't regen that much. And it restricts your regen. And I've noticed when the battery is completely cold, it doesn't let any regen go. And then I've noticed my uh, efficiency, I guess, decrease. So, but skyrocket because it goes sometimes almost up to 500 watt hours um, per mile. So, what I, I'm doing is a little experiment. So I'm going to drive um, my Tesla Model S. I'm gonna drive it completely cold, uh, no battery preconditioning at all. And we're gonna see what happens as far as the efficiency is. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna park the Tesla in the garage on a, a day that's gonna be similarly, similarly, that's a tough word, similarly cold, uh, but park it in the garage, plug it in, um, have it actually preconditioned as well. And then I'm gonna drive it and I'm gonna see what is the difference. I'm gonna drive the same route. Hopefully the temperature will be as close um, to the same as possible. And then we're gonna see what happens. So let's go ahead and dig into it. All right, everybody, here we are. So I've reset the trip. Um, here you can see the yellow bar showing that we have reduced regen. So that's gonna affect a region. And you can already see my um, average has been high. And I'm gonna have the climate set to 68 both times. Um, but this, it just turned on, uh, and then we're gonna see what happens. All right, everybody, I'm actually leaving my first stop of my commute. I go to the gym and then I go to work. So I arrived at the gym uh, with 361 watt hours per mile, 14 miles traveled. And here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, but right here, you can see the yellow. So the battery's still not um, 
warmed up enough, whereas the car will take the full amount of regen, thusly uh, impacting the regen. So we're gonna drive the rest of the way to work and see how things go. Notice it's 36 degrees. When I started today, it was 35. So it's pretty much stayed the whole, the same temperature the whole way. Okay, everyone, we made it here to work. 32 miles traveled, 11 kilowatt hours used, and 348 watt hours per mile. So it's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. Um, mainly because the battery wasn't completely ice cold, so there was some regen. So I'm still gonna do where I park in the garage, but I'm also gonna do another day where I uh, it's unplugged, I leave it outside, and the battery gets ice cold. So now we're gonna fast forward, I think, next to the ice cold day. All right, everybody, it's a little bit colder. I'm gonna reset the trips. Reset, reset. As you can see here, the yellow bar or dashed lines going up much higher. So we should get way less regen and it's going to affect the consumption a lot more. All right, let's get on the way with the cold. And again, to note, it is 28 degrees. So a little bit colder than yesterday, but that's, that's okay. All right, everybody, we made it here to stop one of my commute, 14 miles, six kil kilowatt hours used, 430 watt hours per mile. And you can see we still got that dashed yellow line, 33 degrees. The temperature is pretty close to yesterday. Uh, now I'm gonna go in, work out, and then come back out to do the second part of the test. All right, we're back in the car. Still got the yellow line. Let's see what happens on my way to work. All right, everybody, we've made it here to work. So 13 kilowatt hours, 382 watt hours per mile. So it actually wasn't that much more consumption than when um, I drove here and the battery was like half, <laughs> half cold. So I could only like regen half. Um, we did make it here and um, the orange bar, as you can see right here, is gone. Uh, and then that was just the last um, 30 mile average, which doesn't really help us for this test. 31 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was colder today and not that much more consumption. So I'm really interested to see what happens tomorrow with the um, leaving it in the garage, preconditioning the cabin, the battery, everything will be ready to go when I pull out of my garage. All right, so I'll catch you all tomorrow. All right, everybody, here we are. No yellow bar, nice and preconditioned. 55 in my garage, but it's, it is 33 outside. So we're gonna go ahead and get outside. We're gonna go ahead and reset the trips. Trip reset. All right, everybody, I forgot to do this before I went into the gym, got here. 327 watt hours per mile, so much better than yesterday. Same distance, fewer kilowatt hours. Um, it's 33 degrees outside. I went into the gym for about an hour, came back out, and still no yellow bar, so we should get full regen. And this should be our most efficient run of the week. All right, everybody, I uh, totally forgot to record this, uh, but this is what we did this morning. 32 miles, 10 kilowatt hours, 324 watt hour per mile. So it was less, but really, not that much less, but still clearly more efficient. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look over everything and kind of give you my analysis about, um, you know, efficiency with cold weather and having a, a preconditioned battery versus a non-preconditioned battery. All right, everybody, you join me here inside the Tesla Model S. And now I'm going to analyze all the data uh, that I've collected over the last three days. So basically to recap, is I, on the first day, I had my Tesla parked outside. It was plugged in. The charging finished like within like an hour uh, of me leaving. So I think the battery was still warm. That's why I actually had some regen available. Uh, and then the next day it was outside. The charging had finished way before and the battery was really cold. It wasn't completely ice cold. I've been out here where it was like no regen at all. There's technically a little bit of regen, but basically none. And then the last, which was today, um, parked it in the garage overnight, charged it up. I also preconditioned it. So the battery was completely ready to go and got some interesting numbers. So as uh, no surprise to anybody, the um, instance where I parked in the garage was the most efficient as far as consumption is concerned, the least efficient when it was outside and the battery was the coldest. Um, but what was interesting to me was the numbers weren't um, as jarringly different as I thought they were going to be. But I have a couple thoughts um, surrounding my uh, procedures. So basically, I 
every day for my commute, I drive to the gym, go to the gym, then I drive to work, right? So when I look at the full trip, basically for each car, it's driving there, stopping, driving back, and the climate is, you know, slowly works up, and then I get there, because I set the climate was 68 for each time, and then the climate has to get going again, right? So then it's going to pull um, more energy. Whereas if it was one trip, um, you know, once the climate was going, then it's not going to have as much of a, a, a tax to get it going again and get the cabin um, at the set temperature. Um, so had I done that, I think that the um, parking in the garage would have had a way bigger um, difference between the completely cold battery, but here we are. So in lieu of that, I'm just going to look at uh, the first number going to the gym, and that will probably be a little bit more accurate. And then I'll still mention going to work, but since the um, uh, uh, um, climate had to fire back up again, yeah. So here we are. So the completely ice cold, which actually is the second little um, clip scenario you saw, um, it was 430 watt hours per mile um and i actually translated translated that for everybody to it's 2.32 miles per kilowatt hour that's how i think so not great <clears throat> and i've learned that this car is not the most efficient car in the world uh but 2.32 is definitely not even close to the best it could possibly do and then obviously going uh to work um it dropped a little bit to 382 watt hours per mile and then 2.61 miles uh, per kilowatt hour. Then for the, uh, when the car, the battery, uh, was cold, but not completely cold. Um, so it had some regen, but not a lot of regen. It was 361 watt hours per mile or 2.77 miles per kilowatt hour. And then for the full trip, 348, four, 348 watt hours per mile or 2.87 miles per kilowatt hour. And then lastly, when it was parked in the garage, much better numbers than when it was completely frozen, 327 watt hours uh, per mile or 3.05 miles per kilowatt hour. And then uh, 324 watt hours per mile or 3.08 miles per kilowatt hour for the full trip. So that was the, the only one where I actually got, um, you know, it, it barely improved on the second. So yeah, interesting. So not really shocked by all of that. Obviously, if you have your car in a garage, you plug it in, you precondition it, it's going to do better. But when you compare um, the one that was outside and plugged in, so it was basically preconditioned, not fully, but, you know, good enough. Um, there wasn't that big a difference. There was a, a basically a 30 watt hour per mile difference or a, a point you know, 0.3 mile per kilowatt hour difference. So actually not the end of the world. So if you park outside and can plug in um, and you can precondition it, because I actually didn't precondition uh, the first try, but if I had, I bet the numbers would have been really close or almost <clears throat> exactly the same as long as I preconditioned the car. Obviously that pulls a little bit more energy, but yeah. Um, for the one where I didn't and the battery was cold, when you compare that to the preconditioned, that was a 100 watt hour per mile difference or, you know, almost like a, like a 0.7 mile per kilowatt hour difference. And that is a much bigger deal. So for people who are unable to precondition your car, you are going to see a huge um, impact on your uh, consumption because of the loss of regen. And that's kind of what this whole video is about. And that's why it's nice to see the little uh, the little circle on the Tesla um, driver display where it shows that you don't have regen uh, or do have regen. And uh, the loss of regen severely affects uh, your ability to have um, a good consumption rate. Um, so what are some things we can do? Well, I like obviously in the video, like we've talked about, we can park in the garage. Uh, that's the best. I know a lot of people don't have garages. We only have one um, space. So we always have one car outside. It happens to be mine. <laughs> so leaving it plugged in and making sure you turn on preconditioning is going to be helpful to help improve um, your regen. Because again, you're going to lose about 20% um, of uh, energy consumed if you don't have any regen at all, or you'll lose some percentage once as regen comes back. 
So those are some things uh, we can do there uh, to help kind of improve um, your efficiency in the winter time. Now I do want to mention there are other things that impact your efficiency in the winter time. First off, <clears throat> the climate inside your car, that's gonna affect uh, your efficiency. I had it set to 68 for each trip. Um, so again, uh, my the, the general efficiency for this car when there's no climate is about like 298 miles per watt hour, maybe a, a, a little bit less. Sorry, I had to restart the video. These planes fly over my house. Um, anyways, um, so so I know my car can be uh, more efficient than in winter time, and obviously the climate is going to have an effect on that. Another thing is air density because it's colder. That's going to cause issues, and then um, a bunch of other factors. But the the one I think is the biggest is the loss of regen, and uh, I have several uh, or have had several um, electric cars now, and in the winter, I notice when I go to regen, you know, I'm not putting as much energy in the battery. When I had the Kona, um, it was a pretty big difference. And what was cool about the Kona is as you would regen, it would show like how many miles you put back into the battery, whether it's accurate or not, whatever. But it was always like a good little guide for me. And I would notice um, it was always about 20 to 30% less during the winter time when it would regen. Um, so, Hyundai didn't do the best at showing to the driver <clears throat> that the cold was affecting the regen, but that was the way I could see it. Tesla does a pretty good job communicating that to the driver. We have the Volkswagen ID4, and obviously we, we notice uh, efficiency uh, differences in the winter. A lot of people um, I've seen on the, the, the Volkswagen ID4 Facebook group, you know, right now they're talking about the, their efficiencies during the winter time. And yeah, there's a loss. Why? It's a lot to do with the regen. Um, I wasn't able to test it because like it's my wife's car, uh, but I, I I would be interested to see if the um, the regen bar goes down in the winter time. I, so maybe I'll park her car uh, outside one night and I can like put it in the description below to see if ID4 or if people just want to comment down below. And what would be really cool is if people comment down below, like if you have a different car um, uh, than, you know, Tesla ID4, you know, Hyundai Kona, put down like, what does your car communicate to you during the winter time? Uh, that would be interesting to see. Um, but anyways, with the ID4, we do notice a difference um, for sure, but the, it doesn't, uh, to my knowledge, communicate very well that the cold is impacting um, at least regen. So, but there is a difference there. So that's kind of it for this video. Um, like I said, there's a bunch of things that play uh, into, um, you know, increased consumption of energy on your, your electric vehicle in the winter time. But I think when you don't have regen and you're losing 20% of, um, you know, the power that's going back into your, your battery pack, or, you know, again, that's of course an estimate, it's different for every car. But when you're losing some energy going back into your battery pack, that's gonna affect your efficiency. And um, I guess, I'm, I'm sorry, one thing I wanted to add is sometimes even like, uh, like for a long trip, you try to a 100% and then you, your region is usually limited at 100% or you can't have any at all. And you know, why is my efficiency so high? And then as you drive for a bit, then your efficiency kind of catches back up. It's the same thing with the winter because you can't put the energy in the battery pack. And there it is. So that's it. Um, I hope you all found this video helpful. I know uh, winter can be stressful for a lot of EV drivers, um, but as long as you, um, you know, can charge every night or um, as you need to, um, like you're going to be okay. It wasn't that big of a loss of energy where like, it's like, I'm stressed out during the winter time. Um, but if you do have an EV with less battery, uh, or, 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 or a smaller battery pack, or maybe you have an older EV, like this is, this test is a little bit older. Like if you get an I3 or something like that, the winter could cause some stress because of losing, you know, 20% basically of your energy from not having regen anymore. So Anyways, these are my, this is my research. Um, please add down below. I love to kind of see what everybody's thinking about this stuff. And that's it. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all next time.